Hey, Sammy. Welcome to New Earth Podcast. Um, absolutely delighted to have you on the show today. Sammy and I have been chatting for quite a while, so I was super thrilled when he said to come and talk today. So can you just let us know a little bit about yourself, Sammy, to start with? Yeah, I mean, I like to just think of myself as an ordinary guy on a journey and the journey that I'm looking to share with others to inspire them in whatever way that I can based on my experience. And along the journey, you know, I've learned a lot of useful life skills and and I've been acquainted with the world of duality and I feel like everything's had a deeper meaning and significance that has led me on this, I guess, this hero's journey type initiation back to myself and back to deeper self-awareness. And it's been a roller coaster ride, really. But I'm at a point now where, you know, I feel the winds are calming and set the waves are settling and I'm able to impart knowledge from a, a more neutral space to help empower people to either go through a similar process or just to just to get back in touch with what really matters, as cliche as that sounds. And to me, that means living a life of deeper authenticity and reconnecting to what's more organic and shifting the scales and back in the right direction, not back in the right direction, but towards a new epoch that we've never been in before. And that's a mystery how that's going to unfold. But I know that I have a part to play in that somehow. And I guess that's what it's all been leading up to. I love what you say um, about the the hero's journey and, um, you know, that that idea of really becoming the narrator of our own lives, you know, at this time. Um, can we start with the duality? Because you mentioned the, the duality and, um, you know, like talking from my personal experience, I had a dark night of the soul sort of in my 20s and I had to really look deeply at my shadow. You know, it was quite confronting. And I think that this time that experience that we've been going through the last few years, that's happened for a lot of people. You know, this really needing to look within. Also, our world has has really shifted. So perhaps the things that were there previously, you know, that we could expect to you know, be in our world was that was all suddenly thrown upside down. So it's this kind of re looking at our conditioning, you know, re looking, re looking at what reality is really. And um, you know how that when we start to do that when we start to peel away those layers to look at our shadow look at what's there then we can start to come more into the authentic self you know which is what you you spoke about as well so can you speak to that a little bit to start with sammy yeah i mean i think in order to catalyze or trigger self-awareness we have to have a brush with suffering whether it's a necessity, I'm not 100% sure. However, from my experience, those experiences have been the most useful teacher. And it's just a case of shifting your perception. Obviously, horrible things happen in the world and to individuals. But when we come back to consciousness, that's when we have a choice again. We realize I'm, like you said, the master of my reality i guess so that is the hero's journey it's confronting the dragon within and without because there's a connection there between the two what we what's going on internally will be reflected until the suffering is no longer necessary because we've learned the, the, the what, what what it's teaching us and that's all that i see karma as is is, is, a, is a way of trying to restore balance and when we're in a state of misalignment we'll be triggered back into that core flow again through an external experience that teaches us a lesson and some of those lessons can be painful and and that's what what that's what these dark night of the souls are they're initiations and rebirths that we have to traverse through as we spiral to higher uh, uh, consciousness and deeper self-awareness and when we're in it it can be very confusing and chaotic but when we if we just keep the trust and we 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 ride the waves change because that's what it is change transformation then we come out the other side different and we lose ego negative ego there's a loss of ego accompanied by these dark nights 
And when we come out the other side, we are more in touch with our integrity, more in touch with our soul, and we can start to exercise that and express that in a way that can then serve others, which is the whole point, I guess, of of, of this experience is to reconnect, because that's what love is. It's reconnection, reunification back with God, the divine, which is all of us. So the more we can expand our field of compassion and leave from the heart, then the more that we, we do connect back to that d d divine nature of which we're all a part. So it's strange almost and paradoxical how the darkness feeds the light in that way. But when you look at duality in, in that way, you understand there are two sides of the same coin. And there's a unifying principle beyond the world realms of duality that we can activate to enter that neutral state, as I said before, where we're no longer having to experience suffering anymore at least in that same way or we've shifted our perception of what hardships are and we have more conscious capacity with our free will to direct our fates rather than them being controlled from the outside yeah i love that you question you know whether we need to go through that suffering you know order to realize that re realization because you know i think with the momentum that's 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 happening now i do think it's perhaps possible for people not to have to go through that dark night you know but certainly that was my experience through going deeply into that shadow um you know that was where i found that spiritual connection which is then always with you you know it's a beautiful it's a beautiful beautiful journey um you spoke about you know that sort of going into the darkness and um you know, in terms of that sort of polarity, you know, I, I don't know if this is part of the propaganda, but you know, in terms, the darkness can be more associated with the feminine and, and the light more with the masculine. Um, I, I, I wondered whether you can talk a little bit about those associations, if that's correct, you know, that if that, that you know, because I, I see the feminine um, as being more the sort of receptacle, the receiving as well. So it's that kind of shift in paradigm by going into the darkness, embrace it, embracing it, we do then unleash that creative in a way um, and those untapped aspects of ourselves. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, I've been exploring that myself more recently, going deeper back into the core essence, I suppose, of what the masculine feminine is. Obviously, it's quite nuanced as you get to the higher levels because the two the, the two principles are merged and they're actually inseparable from one another. They can't be one without the other, right? Because they're in a continuous dance and flux. But if you were to kind of compartmentalize it on a more absolute level, I do kind of see the darkness, like you said, as the more feminine principle. It, you could see it rather than the darkness being a negative thing, see it as this this pool of infinite unexpressed potential or the wave function of the quantum and quantum mechanics, you know? And then the particle manifestation of the wave is the masculine, the light of consciousness directed on a potential so that it manifests. So both of those are so amazing and, and, and special in their own ways. And they both work together to create this like, reality. And we need both. We need to be able to sink into that feminine of unexplored mystery and potential and trust and surrender. And also to express the manifestation of potential using our conscious free will in order to create experiences of reality that we can enjoy and learn from. So that is the way I, I would break it down if it was even possible to do that. And then as you go down more towards the 3D, that becomes more pronounced, the masculine feminine, and it does create more separation consciousness, but it's happening so that we can learn to reunify again so the creator can learn about itself through us. So in a way, duality split in its core manifestation as the masculine feminine principle which is why we have masculine feminine biology right and within us we all have the masculine feminine energies so you can actually explore both you can explore your your unique sex um not unique sex your masculine feminine sex or and you can ex uh, explore the the the, uh, the polarities of the energies working behind that of the masculine feminine principle which is nothing to do necessarily with your your sex but it's to do with certain traits and certain 
energies kind of like we just spoke about with the dark and the light fields so the more we acquaint with those polarities the electric magnetic the magnetic feminine the active of, and the, the, the passive principles without judging them and giving one more emphasis than the other the more we can harmonize that within ourselves the more that we come from a more balanced space and the more that we then reunify so this is what we all have to learn in our own way and a lot of suffering actually comes from this split the trauma of the split between these principles and actually when we do bring them back together we do realize okay I, I don't need to keep suffering it was that sense of loss of my other half the counterpart so to speak that made me feel incomplete and that's kind of what the shadow is in a way that we're looking to integrate yeah i, I mean i i guess i see it in a similar way you know in terms of the journey that we're on with this kind of moving into this new paradigm golden age new earth however you like to to put that is that integration of of the masculine and feminine and for me it's like a um it's like a continuum you know the, the principles are like a continuum like not set it now i think what's happened in our world is the with the polarization is one's been set against the other and then there's this tendency to kind of push back or fight against it and one side is kind of made bad and the other okay yeah. um and ultimately you know you know the, the perhaps aspects of the feminine principle like k you know regime you know is or, or or order is is good and chaos is is bad but actually it's out of the disorder that there's the potential for something new out of the chaos that this this amazingness can arise if our lives would be terribly boring if everything was completely mapped out so it's this dance and um you know by integrating it it enables us to move you know to that that along that continuum to the place where we need to to sit in any given moment um, so for me that I find that that really interesting and, and really beautiful. Um, but, you know, also because because there's been aspects that have been demonized, you know, like the feminine principle, you know, for example, the 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 heart energy could be classed as more feminine, the mind's more masculine. So it's not like we want to reject the, the mind, but we want to then integrate the heart mind into that, you know, so that we become whole. Do, do you see yeah. a similar kind of process happening? Yeah. Sammy? I mean, again, the, the principles of masculine feminine reflect in everything. Everything in this reality is governed by one of those principles or the other. So you can look at that mechanisms, look at those mechanisms playing out within your own body. So when we talk about embodiment often and sinking into the, the body and surrendering into that space of holistic awareness, we often do equate that to the feminine. And then the, the more masculine pole is, is more directed and focused within in the mental domain. But of course, there's unhealthy versions of both of them, fragmentations and reversals. You know, the emotions and the mind have an unhealthy expression. So when we give more emphasis to one or another again, then we're still in, in separation. So there's always unhealthy principles. And rather than thinking, you know, that it's been directed for us, we have to take responsibility for the manifestation that we experience as a collective consciousness and realize that we're creating this on some level through our consent, whether it's unconscious or not, you know, whether it's conscious or not, I mean. So as much as we do witness objective, negative things happening, that's not to discount that, but it's always to remember that we are the ones that are responsible and able to shift that by shifting ourselves, by unifying those polarities first, coming together with others who have, done that and who are resonating on that new frequency and then building that co-creative coherent field and expanding it so you know it's an empowering it's empowering to know that actually we don't need to look any further than ourselves really it's beautiful so you know for people that are perhaps like new on this journey how how would you recommend you know being really practical now because we've kind of been more sort of talking about concepts and things you know that that embodiment process of like that returning back to the selves if they're not perhaps having a dark, dark night of the soul they're just kind of curious how, how would you kind of initiate that it, well, um okay on practical level yeah well there's ways that you can reconnect to the body for example through the breath 
and it doesn't have to be the super spiritual like meditative thing at all you know everyone should be conscious of their breathing because it's fundamental to everything the rhythm of life so bringing mindfulness back to that flow of the breath in the body and making sure that you know you're 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 mindful at all times in everything that you do and and you're in that flow so that that that's the foundation i think for reconnecting to the body i i've spoken before with you about the pelvic floor as well within the body and how that can be brought into a state of relaxation because when we're in a state of contraction that's a tense area in our body so the more that we bring attention to the breath more the more we can relax that part of our body see the body is reflecting what's going on behind the mechanics of the, the energy you know so by bringing mindfulness back to the body we can correct those imbalances but everything really does start with the breath so that that would be the the, the starting point and then there's all kinds of things you can do to regulate the nervous system into a state of greater equilibrium you know you can you can just being healthy physically you know having a good organic diet stretching has been is a great one you know light cardio and strength training if you feel that that might help you to release a bit of energy you have to just listen to your body there's no hard and fast rule or fixed yeah. rule it's about what does your body need in this moment tune into it it will always tell you what it needs in any moment and obviously we need to discern between unhealthy impulses and desires instinctual desires and what our body actually needs so we have to work through thing. that phase first of clearing yeah. out the addictions that and that are keeping us losing energy outsourcing energy yeah and getting out of that adrenal state which gives us that temporary high that isn't the same as truly being balanced the adrenals will burn out if we keep following that that those highs chasing those highs in whatever way there's like overdoing exercise is a good example of yeah. burning up adrenals out there's uh, just over taking too much action in general being too focused externally so it's about regulating that balance between discipline and surrender which i like to talk about a lot as a concept yeah, yeah. i love that yeah. i love what you're saying there yeah it's it's very interesting isn't it that you know when we're out of balance you know we might like you say have all those addictions that we, we we're being drawn to and and actually as we start to balance our consciousness, our energy, then we naturally are more drawn to that, which is nourishing and nurturing for us. So that self-regulation starts to happen, you know, more and more that we can start to trust ourselves and listen to ourselves more and more. You mentioned, um, you know, the regulation of the nervous system. And I just wanted to sort of uh, dip into that a little bit more deeply, um, you know, because at the moment my understanding is with the solar flares and you know the energy upgrades that we're having at the moment um it's really um you know and also all the sort of inversion you know the, the stuff that's hitting us the toxicity and in the environment and different things um you know it's having an impact you know the news for example you know, it has an impact on the nervous system so that that self-regulation of the nervous system um have you got anything either on a consciousness level or, or practical level of how to work with the to regulate the nervous system? Yeah, again, it's about being in tune with the fight or flight mechanism and whether we're in operating from either of those extremes or that, you know, a lot of it has roots in that, you know, anxious avoidant tendencies linked to psychological attachment theory. There's always seems to be two extremes of imbalance that we can be at at any time. And that expresses in the nervous system. So that's what the fight or flight is. Bringing attention to your body, as I said before, and the breath will enable you to realize when you're in that state of fight or flight. And that is really what drains our energy ultimately, because the nervous system is the barometer for how balanced we are. So that's the electrical energy. If we're overcharged, then we're going to burn energy. If, if we don't have enough charge, then we're going to be subdued and in the state of, uh, you know, so, so, yeah, that 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 it's all linked. So the, the fight or flight, the nervous system, it's not just this physical thing. It's a receptor. It receives the electrical energy. 
And the more we can balance and harmonize the nervous system, the more we can receive more electrical energy. We can't bypass that process. So we have to get our bodies in check first. We have to stay grounded, ultimately. Yeah. That's something really important. Being grounded isn't just doing exercise and cardio and, and stretching and all those things. That's a part of it. Being grounded is just being anchored in this reality, anchored. Our electromagnetic potential is grounded into the earth which has its own electromagnetic potential. So grounding, you can ground with the earth and receive its healing frequencies from, from the bottom up. So the more we're grounded and anchored on earth and open in the higher channels, that yeah. is what creates that perfect alignment, which will balance the nervous system in itself. So there is a grounded and a spiritual component that are always working together and we don't want to separate them. Absolutely. Yeah, and my understanding is, is, you know, when we're having all these kind of intense energy, solar flares and energetics, actually, if we're able to receive the upgrades, as it were, via the earth, then it's going to be much more digested for us. You know, it's much more kind of um, easier to handle in a way. That's that's my understanding, at least. So I love that, um, you know, bringing in that balance. Um, can we just take check? change tap a little bit because i'm just going back to where we started really i'd love to talk with you a little bit about that um relationship between the inner and the outer world um you know and and that hero's journey of of being the narrator of our own life and and how how that um you know what's happening as to on the outside is a reflection of our kind of inner state and then how how that can enable the kind of shift in timelines and enable us to get, get on a certain trajectory by changing our inner state and resonance really yeah um what i always say is that don't try and change the world just change what you can control which is yourself but within you contains all of reality um not to get too metaphysical but it really is true we are for our aspects of creation so the more we can unlock those higher aspects, the more the more control we have over our reality. And I don't mean control in terms of ego control, personal will. I'm talking about that ability to actually surrender to the divine flow and allow that to take us down our core pathway. And every soul has its own path. That's what's so great. We all have unique blueprints but we can all co-create and connect as well. And that is the fusion of the inner and the outer in a way, is expanding that co-creative field by expanding our consciousness. But in order to do that, like I just said before, we have to come from a grounded space of getting in touch with our body, doing the healing, the shadow work, so that we're not expanding prematurely and then inviting in unwanted energies into our field. We have to start with the self as the anchor and build outwards from there. And that, that's kind of like a ripple effect. And only what's in resonance will be able to come in. So th there's no limit to how far we can expand that. But obviously, it's not, you know, we're not going to wake up one day and be able to change the entire world. And nor is it our responsibility to do that. No. We have to honor everyone's free will and everyone's journey. Because the earth is accommodating everyone's experience here on the 3D during this transitional time. And it's down to us what choice we make and where we move. And we don't need to overly concern ourselves with other people. The more we get ourselves in check and regulate our field, the more that we attract what's in alignment with that, the more trust we have in our flow, core flow and path, the more that we don't need to be in a state of fear and trying to control others. Because trying to control others always comes from fear. Yeah. So that is how I see the connection between the in and the out. And the more we get into that default state of leading from the soul intelligence, the higher mind, the more that we will see that reflected through the divine synchronicity, the more that that strengthens our trust, the more we can build outwards from there. And then it just becomes self-regulating and self-perpetuating. And it's really beautiful when we start to get into that flow, you know, that divine flow and the synchronicities and the magic starts to happen in terms of the, you know, the people that appear in our world as well, you know, um, it's sort of being of that, you know, on that, there's, there's this kind of, ease you know ease and grace you know around the people that you meet um i just wanted to talk in terms of you know even if we're doing that inner work and still in our world we're we're perhaps you know this 
you know, I, I don't know about you, but I still have sort of difficult situations arise. And do you see that as, you know, that we're attracting that as a lesson? You know, is that still part of our kind of manifestation? You know, it's still potentially a really positive thing. You know, it's taking that self-responsibility so that we can really, um, you know, if we engage that, it, it might not necessarily be a negative, you know, it just has the appearance of being negative, you know, in its manifestation. Yeah, well, there can, can't be an ascent without a corresponding descent. That's the paradox. No tree can grow tall unless its roots extend to hell, I think was something to that effect, Carl Jung. Okay. There's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's an alchemy in the process of, of, of exploring our own darkness and transmuting it. And whatever hasn't been addressed has to come to the surface at some point to be dealt with. So sometimes we'll have deeper brushes with the dark, our own darkness and feel as if we're falling off path, but actually it's just the unconscious revealing itself to us to be integrated so that we're in a greater state of wholeness from which we then have greater control over our reality, over ourselves. Otherwise we'll still be governed by those unconscious aspects. Our conscious mind can only conceive a, a, such a small part of what's actually happening behind mm -hmm. closed doors. And, you look at your pay attention to your dreams you realize okay i've still got all of the stuff going on that i didn't necessarily think i needed to work on but still playing out okay well this is resembling what's happening in that blind part of my psyche that needs to come forth so we're in a waking dream in this reality so we have to treat this reality like we would our dreams and everything's an archetypal symbol to pay attention to to teach us something and some of them will appear negative on the surface until that's been transformed back into the light of our consciousness. So we will all have to experience that in our own way. Again, it doesn't have to be some extreme suffering. We have to acquaint with the spectrum of light and dark within us. And that is the confrontation and the inner conflict that needs to be reconciled. I love that. And I love that you brought up the, um, the archetypes, you know, because my, you know, I think you mentioned earlier that we're kind of like universes, you know, we can contain the universe within us, you know, it's that kind of, that, that yin and yang, you know, that seed of, um, you know, the outside and the inside, so forth. And, um, you know, I work with the, the archetypes, the planetary archetypes, and, you know, I love it so much because it's not just about the connection with the planets, it's really about embodying those, those things, you know, and I, that's, that's how I see this journey that we're on. It's like we are, you know, we've been so limited you know, in, 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 in who we are, you know, because of the conditioning and, you know, through these connections with the masculine and feminine within ourselves, the planets, you know, different, different archetypes, you know, like Mars, Mars is that warrior energy, you know, which we can embody and that doesn't necessarily have to be a, a bad thing, you know, it can be a real strength and courageous, you know, and women can have that as well, even though it's a, a masculine energy, you know, I love this kind of really, um, working with the archetypes and, and um you know because we haven't necessarily had role models for these things you know it's it's like it's it's an, a journey inward and perhaps connecting with nature and the planets yeah. and, and and looking for you know the, the five elements or another aspect you know integrating those balancing those five elements and and integrating those so that we you know have those you know the, the power of water but also the gentleness of water you know it's 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 that's uh, and the animals as well, you know, as 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 can, they can kind of yeah. have a similar, you know, can we embody the the bear and the tiger and you know it's. Uh... Yeah, I like what Steiner says about animals. He says that every animal is contained within the human, every archetype of the animal. So if you're experiencing a relationship with a certain animal at a specific time, well, what's that telling you? What what part of yourself is that revealing to you? It's wonderful communion between the human and animal kingdom that we can synthesize. So I always pay attention to my external environment and what's happening. I'm not overanalyzing it. Actually, I'm coming from a place of more presence and connection, but I feel it. That's the important thing. I'm not trying to, I'm not like we're sitting with the ducks thinking, oh, what's this duck teaching me right now? Sure, I'm yeah. In a state of, of, of mindful <laughs> observance, you know, and st I'm in that stillness and I'm just feeling that connection. And it is, it, it, it is revealing something organically to me. So everything in this reality 
is conscious and everything is, is being attracted to us uh, if we can identify the symbol of what's showing us then that's a good key to oh, it's interesting i've just come back from the uk i was in in glastonbury actually and i was on a i was helping on a master mantak cheer class and we were doing we were working with the animals the qigong you know um so that you're actually you know you're doing the movements and you're you're feeling into that 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 you know it's very tangible it's not it's not a mental kind of process you know it becomes and how that relates to the different organs and meridians and you know it's 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 again it's a beautiful dance when it kind of starts to unfold yeah and we you know when we perceive life in this way the waking dream again i, I like that term then life opens up to us and we can abandon fear recognizing that everything's serving a function and then ironically the more you do that the less you'll attract fearful experiences to you for example if you have a negative dream you wake up and you're in a state of temporary fear but then it's it's gone isn't it and then you can access that memory and think okay well what what, what was it what was you know, some dreams can be horrific, you know, some of them can be really, really dark. But you don't you can you don't need to be attached to the experience. That's what being in the observer awareness is, is being able to take a step back and observe life almost like a movie that's being projected. Not to say that you're not participating in it, and not at all. You can still be in the world but not of it. But when we see life like that, we don't need to keep interfacing with our the emotions, yeah. unhealthy emotions because that will pull us back in to those negative timelines so it's been empowering for me to take that more observational stand and you can't rush your way to that again sure. it's no yeah. just being like okay tomorrow i'm just going to suddenly witness life in that way again there's a process that you have to respect to get to that state you do have to have go through that hero's journey you do have to confront your darkness you do have to maybe have some of those uncomfortable experiences to trigger you back to self-awareness but it's all contributing back to that increased consciousness the higher mind awareness that is able to observe not just external reality but your own thoughts and emotions as well with that before you identify with them and act them out because that's yeah. still coming from a place of fear so the same rule applies inwardly as it does outwards yeah, I love that. You know, it's just creating that space to notice, isn't it? Because otherwise we're just going down the same pathways of our conditioning and we're going to get the same results. So we're not going to create anything new. So it's just, you know, creating that microsecond moment. That, oh, OK, <laughs> this is how I would normally kind of react. You know, what can be different in this moment? Um, and like you say, it is a journey, um, you know, and, and um, it's certainly, you know, it's a journey that I'm, I'm certainly working with and, and, and that process of self reflection of noticing and, and then increasingly moving more into self trust, I feel, you know, because it's, it's um, when what we're, we're it, it's a journey really of responsibility, isn't it, we're starting to take more responsibility of our own actions, you know, and what we see what's happening in the world as as uh you know even that could be you know an extension of our consciousness so therefore you know we take responsibility as well so it, it's it's not not to the extent where we're going to feel guilty for what's happening in the in the collective consciousness you know because we can't you know like you said earlier we can't kind of save the world and actually you know having the background as a therapist myself we're always taught how unhealthy it is to try and do that you know to try and it's it's like a savior sort of complex that's actually an imbalance you know so it's kind of that um that self-responsibility you know increasingly moving into that self-responsibility yeah that's that's an important distinction to make between types of responsibility not taking on the onus to of the not taking on the responsibility of the collective but taking self-responsibility which then helps the collective for the reasons we said before because you can only be responsible for your choices your actions your thoughts your emotion and the more you do that the more you invite that divine grace in 
the more that you operate with positive virtues, the more you expand your field of compassion, the more you then help others. That's a much better way to do things than to fight something with resistance because that, that part of you that's fighting is in fear and there's something within you that doesn't trust yourself, like you said. So self-trust is very important. I agree. I, I, I often use that term myself as a state that we need to move deeper into because it's not just about just trusting the self in a, in a literal sense it's also a metaphysical sense that the more trust we have in ourselves the more trust we have in god the divine to work through us and direct us through our own higher identities so essentially what we're doing is unlocking higher aspects of ourself that are connected to those higher realms and allowing that to navigate us through reality when we're still being driven by the mind the ego mind the monkey mind then it's still operating from a place of self-serving interests yeah and unresolved conflicts which keep us stuck in conflict with the outer world because we're trying to project our shadow onto it to try and fix it and then we just yeah. keep running in circles repeating these karmic patterns and that's why sometimes we have to learn some hard lessons because the pattern will keep showing itself until we identify it and resolve it inwardly that's so that's all the karma is again it's not it's a self-corrective rebalancing mechanism it's no external deity scorning deity that's trying to punish us for anything it's about us recognizing the self-responsibility to transform ourselves and when we do that like i said the divine grace opens its doors to us but it won't do that if we're acting irresponsibly. And that is our choice. We are the ones who have the choice always. No matter what's happened in the past, we can always course correct at any moment yeah. if we decide to. So, yeah, well, we're in the duality, aren't we? If we're in the fight, we're in the duality. So it's it's kind of we're only embracing, we're not embracing the whole then. So there's not that, that alignment, you know, of head, heart, you know, base, you know, through us, you know, because we're out of alignment with the, in the, in the duality um that um i'm just going to play devil's advocate is that okay <laughs> um so just just out of interest you know the the i you're talking about the the you know it's our choice and i'm just interesting do you and i know you've spoken about three free will but do you feel that we ever really have choice or do you think we just think we have choice because we um you know because because there's so much conditioning, you know, and I know that this this process that we're talking about is um, unpeeling that conditioning to be able to see the authentic self. But ultimately, do you, you know, like, for example, if we went out for lunch, you know, and we chose a salad, have we really chosen the salad or have we, did we really not have a choice because our belief systems about how a salad is healthy and, you know, the burger or whatever is unhealthy is actually conditioning that choice. You know, so it's, it, do you do you feel that we ever really don't have that total free from well, conditioning? Yeah. Well, when we're still running programming, then our free will has been manipulated to, to direct our choices to unhealthy expression. So in those cases, our, our, we're not acting according to our own will. But remember, I'm talking the higher will here, not the personal will. The personal will of the ego actually runs according to the programming. So there's another will, a higher will, which is a divine flow. And this is the paradox of between free will and fate. Is that they're one and the same thing again. So the more that we get in touch with the, the knowledge, that self or the awareness that we do have a choice, the more we can surrender to that divine flow and follow our core pathway, which is almost preordained. But the way that it manifests is it can take loads of different expressions. And that's what this reality affords us, all of that, that choice to explore lessons and experiences in different ways it's not all about learning lessons it's about coming back to greater inner peace and joy and presence and connection but the the lessons are what brings that that value to life and purpose so the way i look at free will on a higher level is that we do have a choice uh, in at least in the way that we perceive it down here but the choice is to get back into that core flow you know so free will and fate are in another dance again and rather than separating them just see them as the same thing but yeah certainly when we're we haven't resolved the shadow and we have a lot of shadow then the shadow will drive our our our, our choices and essentially we don't really 
we're not utilizing our free will in the best way right right that's so that's totally fascinating and i love that and it's the paradox isn't it the the faith and the free will you know it's it's you know it's that it's that interlinking again of you know the surrender to be able to step forward if, if that makes sense um yeah i i totally love that and and is that i i know you talk about this sort of timeline split splitting is that where you would see that kind of choice point in a way it's like if you've done that inner work if you're on that trajectory of of you know aligning with the divine and natural flow that you you're on, you know, as opposed to perhaps those that are still not questioning reality and choosing to just go down that pathway. Is that is that for you where the timelines would split? Yeah, I mean, I change my perception of what that would look like. I try not to predict it so much now because for me, it's about coming back to a greater presence and letting the journey unfold without trying to control or predict the outcomes, which is still the ego mind trying to stay in control. So true surrender is surrendering to our present experience and allowing the divine mystery to unfold in each moment, no matter what our circumstances are. And that, to me, is a version of timeline splitting in the sense that we're following our core flow now and not following the dictates of something outside of us. So the split is what's happening in each moment according to how much we're in alignment with our, our core personal timeline. So as I said before, we all have our own timelines and they intersect depending on how coherent and resonant they are and when we build those co-creative fields we can split off in 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 community in, in communities and tribes and how that will pan out is subject to you know a lot of variables that we don't need to know or try and predict all we need to do is trust absolutely that Just we're in the that flow. Yeah. yeah yeah and that's great that's that that's that that's that's the divine creativity of life we don't want to know what our future is or otherwise it would destroy like we said that free will the, the the idea that we do have a choice of how our story because it's you know life is a canvas and we're we're the ones architecting our reality so we need to have that mystery intact we don't want to have predictable outcomes. We don't want to try and control. We only try and control because we're in fear, because we want to know our future in, yeah. in fear that it might not play out the way that we, we want. But when we really learn to master surrender to the divine will, we feel that trust in our bodies and we know that we're insulated and divinely guided and protected. So then we can just allow ourselves to just embrace the experience. It's amazing, Sammy. I love the way you're able to sort of put all this into words so succinctly. I, I know that you've spoken quite a lot about how coming into the heart is the gateway, you know, the gateway to this transition that we're going through, the shift of paradigms into new earth or the golden age. Um, yeah, so well, the heart is, is the gateway to the soul, isn't it? So the more that we can clear all of the residue in the lower centers, you know, uh, the more that we we can vitalize the heart and open and expand the heart, the more that we do attract what's in resonance with that frequency. So a lot, it, it really is a, it about opening the heart. But again, you can't just force the heart to open if, if it's blocked. You have yeah. to identify why and where it's blocked and remove those barriers to then open the channel to access the heart intelligence. And we can, we can, there is a discipline involved, I suppose. It's not all just about doing shadow work and all of that. You can access the heart in any moment through choice if you're able to practice positive virtues and compassion, you know. Of course, we should all be doing that to the best of our ability. But that that's the key the best of our ability if there's obvious projections judgments and triggers that we're struggling to to get out of then that's when we need to journey back into the underworld and retrieve those unconscious contents that are blocking that access to the heart but really it is all about getting back into that center point of the heart and then expanding from there yeah and it's such a strong energy field as well to, to you know when we come from the heart it's going to it's it almost draws in 
you know what what you know it kind of creates that um toroidal field um uh so something that you touched on earlier was that um you know moving into contribution you know uh, shifting out that shift from self-serving into contribution which is another shift that we need to kind of navigate really during this time did you want to talk to that a little bit yeah again that self perpetuating the more we establish the heart connection so again we want to work in the right order here we can't force serving others and purpose it has to unfold organically so as we shift from ego consciousness to soul at the soul identity the purpose reveals itself to us and that purpose always involves serving others as well as ourselves in some way because as i said before it's about that reconnection so when we open that those that that channel clear the blocks we invite in that higher purpose and it's unique to each of us and again it, it will take care of itself all we need to do is follow that excitement and the passion to inspire others doing what we actually love our true authentic passions not the distractions of the ego that we think we're passionate about there's a key difference here so there is a kind of initiation i believe that most what all humans do have to go through to discern between being in that soul resonance and being in the the, the still governed by the, the the ego purpose which often comes at the expense of our, our energy or someone else's service to self so yeah like i can't say what that would look like again it's the same thing as we just said before purpose is very unique to you but when you'll know it when you're 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 when you're in alignment with that core flow you your intuition guides your actions and you creatively express your unique blueprint and other people will gravitate towards that so you don't need to put it on anyone you don't need to market yourself brand yourself you know those things might help at a certain stage but after a while, the, 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 the default flow becomes so effortless that you're just living your purpose at all times and everything that you do. I Is love it, how you've, um, sorry, interrupt me. I love um, how you've sort of brought that in and out together again, because sometimes you hear people are saying, you know, almost like a choice point between the service to self, service to others. And by integrating that unique contribution, you know, you kind of have both because it's, and that makes so much sense to me because otherwise we're buying into the polarity you know it's better to it's better to give than receive you know and ultimately we need to feel nourished ourselves one thing i know. do need to say about that though is that the service to other this I've, i'm actually i don't tend to use that definition anymore precisely for this reason is yeah. service to, it is actually a true dichotomy between service to self and others I, I get i get what you're saying and it's totally right in in most other cases where you don't want to polarize to either extreme but yeah. service to self strictly means to serve the self at the expense of others so it's very self-serving materialist yeah a service to others doesn't actually exclude the self it encompasses the self I so see. Actually you are transforming from service to self to others it is a continuum where we all lie but we actually are looking to become more and more service to others. So yeah, I, I actually don't really like that term because it can be it can be confused again as another false dichotomy where right. we might serve others at the expense of the self, or we just serve the self. In which case, you're completely right. That would be two sides of one coin because there are those people that serve others almost altruistically, but they're not actually doing what they need to do for themselves so it actually comes at the expense of their energy likewise if you're serving yourself at the expense of others you're vampirizing um um of other other people's energy yes. so both of those extremes are two sides of the same coin the yeah. true service to others is when you've learned to take care of your own needs first and then that it naturally extends to serve others that's it and, and and my understanding is you know in terms of the time we're in um you know it's the age of aquarius and the aquarian energy is very much about that unique contribution and how we can all bring our unique contributions and value each of those you know in, in its whereas we've you've, we've sort of 
dumbed everything down and you know in the the previous you know paradigm that we were living in so so yeah 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 there yeah exactly we're now moving into a new epoch in that sense where um we're no longer being governed by but it, it was all necessary this is the thing that, that this cycle has been we're in a dark age and there's no denying it carly yuga people have different names or whatever and people have different time stamps so we can go into that and the procession of the equinoxes and all of the celestial stuff you know, people can look into that themselves and determine how much they align with that. But I just go by my own experience with this cycle and see how, what, as a soul, what I'm going through in this journey, right? Amazing. Did you want to, as we're on the solstice today, did you want to speak to um, anything specific to that in relation to anything? It just seems an amazing synchronicity that you were talking today. The summer solstice, you mean? Yeah, well, for us here. Oh, is that? Oh, is, is what day does it fall on for you guys? Well, it's a, it's airing on the twenty first. This this podcast, so it will be oh, the, right. the solstice. Yeah. Right, 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 got you, got you. Yeah, I was gonna say. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Very confusing we you. Speak, we didn't speak about that before. Then I was just looking at the day. I was like, hang on. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, it's airing on the solstice. So um, yeah, but, just, um, you know, people listening will, it will be the solstice yeah. today. So. Right, that's a nice date to air it. And irrespective, you know, we are in that, 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 that period now in June where, you know, we are exposed to more light and the days are longer and we are move, shifting into that energy of, of, of moving into the summer. And it's always a good time, actually, for me. I, I, I feel it's a time to go out and get to take charge of your reality you know we have the winter the equinox and the winter solstice and the equinoxes you know sometimes it's it, it, times are called for more introspection you know when there's less light and there's more darkness that calls us to go inwards and access more of the shadow and this that won't apply to everyone but it does for me i like to follow the flow of the yeah. cycle you know so in this time of rebirth, following the spring, coming into the solstice, it's a time of rejuvenation and 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 it's un, and and expressing new potential and forming new connection. So I used to have you know rituals that I would do, not literal rituals, but on the solstice, you know, I'd go to Stonehenge and just be connected to the Earth's grid and the ley lines. Um, so it's a special time for me on the 20th, actually. It's, it's, it is a time of reflection, but reflection in terms of accessing positive potential, unexpressed potential. Yeah, that's the way that I see the solstice and a time of coming together. I think that's really important. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing, Sammy. Um, was there anything else you wanted to talk about that we haven't touched upon yet before we finish that you think it's particularly important for the viewers to know? You know, maybe even just talking a little bit more about the evolution of consciousness that we're, you know, because this is New Earth podcast, you know, that kind of talking more on the collective level, but I know you don't like to predict, so maybe that's not, that's not a good question. That's all right. I, I, I know. I, I, I like thinking about the future and, and imagining a, a new future. I do that a lot. Actually, holding a good, holding a, a a new earth potential in your mind and imagining the kind of future you would like to move towards is actually a really good thing to practice to do. Utilize the imagination because that's how manifestation is birthed from the mind, the imagination, the higher mind. So you can actually still do that and be present at the same time. So be present and accepting and have visions of the future. It's just when we expect things to unfold in a specific way that we block the organic flow through resistance because yeah. our mind is only focused on a specific potential. So yeah, that's a good place to round up actually is to say, you know, do have a big vision of the future. Do en envisage yourself moving towards these higher frequency expressions of reality. Think big and never limit yourself in a box of perception because that's what will reflect to you. So we can keep supercharging our, our mind with these higher frequencies. And I do actually use my mind to imagine this new earth environments, what that might look like, what, what the community would feel like. And I bring that feeling back into the present 
and then allow that to unfold as it needs to. Beautiful. I love it. And the, the beauty is, is that that, you know, as we, as we start to embody it, 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 it actually unfolds, you know, like I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm pretty fortunate living in Portugal in a, in quite a lovely nature and community, you know, and it feels like that, that resonance and unfolding before my eyes, really. So I think there's a speeding up, you know, of manifestation as well. Would you agree with that? Oh yeah. The timelines yeah. accelerating as we elevate consciousness, that's the way it goes. The manifestation will, will speed up with it. And, the law of cause and effect will speed up. So whatever we're holding is in our thoughts and our minds, that we're going to see that reflected at a quickening rate. So let's try and align with that, you know, that right, right potential and absolutely witness that feedback to us. Yeah, and hold that vision for the the future of what we're moving towards. Um, yeah. So any last thoughts and also do let people know how they can get in contact with you. Um, and I know you've been doing some little workshops that you kind of have these little meetings now, don't you? It's kind of group group workshops. I don't know if you want to speak to to that at all. Yeah, I've got, I think we've covered the core core points today. Um, yeah, I do run fortnightly or monthly webinar meetups over Zoom with a nice intimate group. And we, we've been discussing the mechanics of a true embodied ascension and shadow work. And now I'm moving into spontaneous workshops where we're going to touch on specific themes and have a more interactive exchange with each other. And it will be about really inspiring topics, you know, about human history, the earth grid and ley lines and things like the solstice, all of this stuff. Um, that's more expansive because I feel like in my life I'm crossing over that threshold now of not delving too much into the shadow now and <laughs> utilizing my experience. So I want to share that with others in a contained space where everyone's serious, but everyone's also having fun and connecting more intimately together. So anyone's always welcome to join that. I advertise that in advance, normally about a week ahead on my Facebook, Sammy Richard or my telegram at shifting timeline so you're welcome to join anyone if you're interested amazing sammy um and i, I feel quite inspired to to join myself actually as well it sounds amazing yeah, so um, yeah sure. i'll, I'll definitely look, look out well. for the next one so yeah. um thank you so much it's been it's been so inspiring and i i've just really loved chatting with you sammy thanks so yeah. much for Catch up. thank you today. sarah thank you uh, thanks everyone for listening. I hope that you've enjoyed and, and do hit the subscribe um, so you can join more New Earth podcasts. Bye for now.